Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to take a closer look at the in-memory cache that we have in .NET and explain why it might be causing unintended behavior for your application and why it might not be the one you should be using. We're going to take a deep dive and explain everything you need to know. If you like the above content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell and for more training, check out nickchapsas.com. And speaking of nickchapsas.com, I just launched my summer sale for 2022. So the first 100 of you that go to nickchapsas.com and use discount code SUMMER2022, you can find it in the description down below as well, can get a 20% discount on any of the courses. The bundles are excluded because they're already discounted, but individual courses, you can use that code and buy for 20% off. So if you were waiting for a discount code, this is your chance. Okay, let's go back into the video. All right, so first let's take a look at how we can use the in-memory cache that we get in .NET and understand why we might want to do so. So in here I have an API, a weather forecast API, but this is not the boilerplate weather forecast API you would get just by creating a template. What this actually does instead is behind the scenes, I've wired it up to use Open Weather API, which is a real a weather API that gives you the current weather forecast, and it has code that calls that API. However, what happens with that API is that it's rate limited. So I have a set amount of requests I can make to that API every hour, I think. And here's the thing with weather. It doesn't really change that fast unless you're in London and it changes for five minutes. But we don't want to waste those API requests if many calls for the same city happen in a small amount of time. So what we could do is add either an in-memory cache or if our application is distributed, a distributed cache. I've talked about how we can add Redis in a different video. Now we're going to assume we have one instance running and we're going to see how we can cache it just for that one instance. So what we can do, and I'm going to show you a very simple way to do this, is I can go here and I can say builder.services.add memory cache. You have that by default in your ASP.NET Core application. And now what I'm going to do is use the curation. I'm not going to add the caching logic directly into my weather service because I don't think my weather service itself should know how to cache things. So what I can do instead is I can have a cached weather service over here, which again implements the same iWeather service and I'm going to go ahead and implement the missing member and I'm going to inject the iWeather service itself and I'm going to do some dependency injection magic to wire this up and use the real service in the cache service and decorate the real call. For now all I want this to do is turn this into a sync return await weather service dot get city and we're using the city name to get the application oh and in fact i should show you the application uh, working probably before i move on i'm gonna go ahead and debug it and go to postman and call this for london so i'm gonna go ahead and call this and as you can see we are getting the actual weather in london right now so let me just stop that and now they have this cast weather service what i can do is go to the program.cs remove this iweather service and keep the weather service itself and then add a second call to do the decoration and say services.add singleton iweather service. And this now points over here to a new cached weather service that gets its weather service by the get required service method. It can look a bit confusing, uh, but I've talked about this in a separate video and in my dependency injection course to show you how you can do decoration. Now, you can use something like Scrooter to do that, but it's good to know how you can do it manually if you don't want to pull in a dependency. So this will do the decoration. And now if I show you here, let me just stick a breakpoint here and here and go back and debug the application. Now, every time I call that endpoint, what happens is my cast weather service over here is being called first, and that's what calls the real weather service. So what we can do now, and that's a no-brainer at this point, is we can inject the built-in memory cache. So I memory cache, and then memory cache over here. And then what we can do is use the city name as the key, and then cache it for, let's say, I don't know, five, 10 minutes, whatever you want to cache it, or so we can say return await memory cache dot get or create async and the key here is the city and then we have the factory method which will be used to add a value if it wasn't present in the cache so we get or create if the value wasn't there and all we need to do is return the actual value so I can actually just copy that over here and say return 
this and just to prevent this extra closure even though we already have the weather service but whatever is i can say entry dot key dot to string because the key here is actually an object which is a bit uh, questionable and annoying but whatever in most cases the key will be a string so now we have something like this and what happens now of course i have to fix my dependency injection method so x dot get required service i a memory cache goes here and once i do that and i uh, debug this application now and i'm going to show you again with breakpoints you will see that this method over here will only be called once so it is being invoked now once now that we have the weather for london if i call it again we don't see it because as you can see by the milliseconds in the response as well and the fact that the breakpoint isn't called we are using the in-memory cache to cast that value so we don't have to waste those api credits every time and i did say actually add a five to ten minutes uh, expiration so i can go here and change this to be like that and say entry dot absolute expiration relative to now and i can set that to time span um from minutes and say 10 so every 10 minutes the cache will be expired for this specific key so very simple very straightforward now here is a bit of a problem with this if you're using the get or create methods of memory cache you might have noticed in your application a bit of a weird behavior and this is where the main problem comes in let's take a look at the actual problem in isolation i'm gonna go in this examples project which is just a console application and i'm just gonna clear that and for this to work i will need to add the memory cache package so it's the microsoft.extensions.caching.memory that that's the one that has the implementation as well and i'm gonna add a simple method over here so this method will use the parallel dot for each method to create 50 different operations that get or create a value which is a counter that's being incremented every time it is added and then it prints the value out um, from that thread you might see where i'm going with this if i go ahead and i call that and i run it let's just quickly switch around and execute this then as you can see you see different values here 2 24 2 again 2 2 26 2 2 10 2 but why is that happening this is not the behavior you might expect if you thought that this is thread safe because the idea would be that the first thing that actually goes in to add the key is the one that actually sets the value and then everything else gets the same value well what happens is that if the thing you have in this, which is the factory method in this case, takes some time, then the factory method might be invoked multiple times. This doesn't mean that this operation isn't thread safe. Technically, it is thread safe, but it isn't really atomic or deterministic. So if you have experienced something similar in your applications, that's why it happens. And actually, I think the concurrent dictionary method equivalent of this also suffers from this and microsoft knows this, this is a well documented thing that they're absolutely happy with you dealing with the thing that many people choose to do with this is to actually do their own locking of this operation so they don't have to deal with this uh, deterministic problem however there is a new kit package called lazy cache that takes matters into its own hands and i will put a link in the description and that's what i'm going to show you now to see how you can replace this in-memory cache with lazy cache that wraps that in a lazily way and offers the same exact features but in a deterministic way so all we need to do to recreate this thing but with lazy cache is find the lazy cache nuget package it is here i'm gonna go ahead and add it and then the exact same method with lazy cache looks something like this so lazy cache has the i app cache interface and the caching service and then the rest here is the same and if now i use lazy caches approach here and i run it then as you can see everything is one the first thread went in and that's the only thing you deterministically see and it doesn't matter how many times i do this this will happen all the time oh and you might say hey nick you're running this in debug mode and i know that release mode actually optimizes this type of thing i'm gonna switch back to the in-memory cache and show you that nope it doesn't this is a problem as you can see even in release mode however in the lazy approach it works both in release and in debug every single 
time. So if you need that sort of consistency, atomicity, and deterministic performance for your application, then Lazy Cache is an excellent library. I'm going to show you how you can use it now in the API and replace what's in the in-memory cache. So what I can do is go here and choose the Lazy Cache Nougat package, but they actually have an ASP.NET Core alternative, which I can use. I'm going to go ahead and install that. And this gives me access to the alternative of the add memory cache method, which is the builder.services.add lazy cache instead. And now I don't have to use the in memory cache. I have to use the I app cache um, interface over here, which I also have to use in here as well. So app cache, app cache. I'm not going to change the name. I'm just going to call it memory cache. And it's no longer called get or create async. It is actually called get or add async the rest is still the same you're still dealing with the same entry object so it's nice that they're wrapping that in a very nice way and now that's all i needed to do to migrate i can simply go ahead and debug this and i can go here and as you can see it all works super fast super nice and i don't have to waste those calls to that api however I cannot close this video without telling you about the performance of Lazy Cache because that sort of guarantees will have an impact to the performance of the package itself and the caching. Now, obviously, performance is contextual and means different things from different people, but I have to raise it with you. So what I'm going to do is go to these examples and I'm going to add a few benchmarks here. So I'm just going to say benchmarks and I'm going to add benchmark.net the NuGet package to run some benchmarks. So install that real quick and then add a memory diagnoser over here. We don't need the uh, generation columns. And then I'm going to add a few benchmarks. So I'm going to run the benchmarks against the iApp cache and the memory cache. So the two different options with default settings and run the following two benchmarks. They both investigate the same get or create and get or add method because the other methods don't really suffer from the same problem because they don't have the factory delegate that can cause this type of problem. Now, obviously the other methods, the get or the create or the set, also deviate in performance a bit, but I'm going to leave it to you to benchmark everything for your own use case. I'm just going to see the thing that I'm actually fixing over here. And the reason why I chose such a simplistic example is because I just want to strip down everything but the bare minimum performance to investigate the true delta between the two. So what I'm going to do is go to the program.cs over here and say benchmark runner dot run, and I'm going to select the benchmark class yes that's it and then change this to release select the right thing and then run my two benchmarks and see how they compare to each other all right so results are back and let's see what we have here so the memory cache built-in one is 43.7 nanoseconds and no memory allocated and the lazy cache alternative is 92 nanoseconds and some memory allocated now, to me, this would be expected because it is actually doing more. However, I don't know how much of this can be optimized. And I highly recommend that you give a start to the project Lazy Cache and you go and see if you can help because I think it's an excellent NuGet package from a functionality perspective. It might be able to get even better from a performance perspective as well. For me, the benefit I would be getting by caching far outweighs the performance difference I would have. But also it comes down to the use case. It might be that if I want to squeeze as much performance as possible, I would actually remove the get or create method altogether and have a get method, check if the value exists, if it does return it, if not, call the create method, which splits the thing in two, but actually would give the absolute best performance for this use case. So pick your battles, choose smartly, choose the one that fits for your use case. And if you want to stick with this get or create or the get or add method, then I recommend just to have this consistent behavior to go with lazy cash but ultimately it's up to you and your use case well that's all i had for you for this video thank you very much for watching special thanks to my patreons for making this possible if you want to support me as well you can find the link in the description down below leave a like if you like this video subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well and i'll see you in the next video keep coding